Hello, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. Now, as the COVID-19 evolves and it comes up with new variants, it remains to be seen whether the existing vaccines are effective against the new variants. One of the vaccines that has been used in India is Covaxin, which is being used along with Covishield and Sputnik V. Now, how effective is Covaxin against various variants of COVID-19? Let's discuss it today. Now, Covaxin is an inactivated vaccine or inactivated virus vaccine where, is a, where a weakened or dead virus is basically used to trigger immune response. This is the coronavirus. So basically, Bharat Biotech, the company involved in production of Covaxin, took the Indian isolate of COVID-19, grew it along with National Institute of Virology and inactivated it using a chemical called beta-propiolactone. So Covaxin is an inactivated virus vaccine, which means the virus is dead, but it can trigger immune response in the vaccinated individuals because of the various proteins and the various molecules present in the virus. Now, as we have seen globally, various variants as shown here have emerged, which show different mutations in various parts of the genome. As you can see here, this is the coronavirus genome. It is about 30,000 nucleotides, which are the bases which make its genome. And it is an RNA virus. It is a single-stranded RNA virus. And various variants, for example, alpha, which first appeared in UK, beta, gamma, eta, and in India, B1617, kappa, and delta have been prominent. And now there is a new variant which has come up in some samples in India, which is Delta Plus. It has been designated as AY.1. So there is a scientific terminology, scientific nomenclature for these variants, as well as the Greek letter equivalents. Now the Delta variant, which is B1617.2, B1617.1 is the Kappa variant, and B1617.2 this is the one which was responsible for the second wave of corona epidemic in India, which has been the deadliest so far in the world history. It caused over 4 lakh infections per day and led to thousands of deaths every day. Now studies have been conducted and they are already in the preprint stage. That means they haven't been peer reviewed yet. So other experts in virology and epidemiology have not had a chance to look at it. But there are indications that the vaccines are still effective, although the variants are causing some concern. For example, this study, which was highlighted by the New Indian Express, Covaxin was found to be less effective against the B1617-2, that is the Delta variant, responsible for the second wave. Now, this is that study, neutralization against B1351. So this is the Beta variant and the Delta variant. So they compared the response of Covaxin against what it was responding against the original B1 variant, that is the alpha variant, and compared it to the beta and the delta variants. So the finding was that there was a reduction in the neutralization tendency in the sera of COVID-19 recovered cases. 3.3 fold and 4.6 fold less as compared to the alpha variant and the Bharat Biotech so Covaxin recipients so 3 and 2.7 fold reduced response against beta and delta so they recruited 37 people and out of them 20 were the ones which had recovered from COVID-19 and they had been infected with the alpha strain. So they got the serum of these 20 patients and 17 had received both the doses of Covaxin. So this was their comparison study. So they found that there was reduction in the neutralization titer 
when this alpha recovered serum as well as covaxin uh, recipient serums were treated against the beta and the delta variants now there are a couple of problems with this study although it is a preprint study so i'm sure many of the reviewing uh, scientists they will flag these concerns but one of the glaring concerns about this study is number one it, it is a very small sample sized study 37 participants is not a lot for testing the efficacy of these vaccines i think i think the study would have been better if they had recruited more patients and also there is no data about how these patients were recruited and another point is that they report no conflicts of interest others do not have a conflict of interest among themselves but if you look at the authors list of this paper the others are from ICMR, National Institute of Virology, Bharat Biotech and ICMR. ICMR was involved in testing of this vaccine. Bharat Biotech, of course, made the vaccine. So it is the company and National Institute of Virology is where they isolated the virus and gave it to Bharat Biotech for growing and developing the vaccine. So they all have conflict of interest. They, are, they have conflict of interest either financially or reputation wise in terms of scientific reputation. And this point was also made by Professor Shahid Jamil, who is the director of Trivedi School of Biosciences at Ashoka University. He said that there is a direct conflict of interest in this paper coming from National Institute of Virology, ICMR and Bharat Biotech. Every single author either has a reputational or financial conflict of interest. But they formally deny this, which is unethical and troubling. And I have already you know, flagged some concerns about Covaxin earlier also regarding its refusal by Brazil. So I am also a little bit concerned about this. But anyhow, it shows that the vaccine is still effective, although the neutralization titer, which is the neutralizing antibodies which are produced in the serum against these variants is less. Another point of concern was about the breakthrough infections. Breakthrough infections are those infections which happen even when the people have been vaccinated. And these have been coming up in UK as well as in India. There have been reports about people who have got both the doses of Covaxin or Covishield and they are still being infected with Corona again. So what are the variants that are causing this breakthrough infection? So a study led by Vinod Skaria at IGIB, Sridhar Siva Subhu and Randeep Guleria at Ames, they found that the, the Covishield as well as Covaxin recipients had breakthrough infections and two variants were uh, recovered from them. It was the Delta variant and the Alpha variant, which was the original variant. Now, this is a point of concern because this shows that even the earlier, the one, the variant which was actually the one against whom the vaccine was developed is still causing a breakthrough infection and the newly evolved variant, for example, Delta variant is also causing a breakthrough infection. So it remains to be seen how effective the vaccines will be. Now, this is not a point of extreme caution here. Vaccines are still our best way to prevent this pandemic. And this is just showing that, okay, you know, there is a reduction in uh, there is a reduction in potency of the vaccines, but that does not mean that the vaccines are not effective at all. Okay, so get your vaccines. And what about the Delta Plus variant? So Delta Plus variant is the AY.1 lineage, which has another mutation, which is the K417N. This is a variant. This is a mutation which was also found in the beta variant, which was first found in South Africa. And Covishield was found to be very less effective against this variant. And now this mutation has been found in Delta Plus along with all the other mutations present in Delta. And Delta variant is already showing the signs of more transmission. So it has evidence that it is more transmissible as compared to the other variants. Now, National Institute of Virology is still testing and it is, has begun studies where it will test the Delta, Delta Plus variant, whether the Covishield, Covaxin and the Sputnik V can fight off this uh, variant but we still don't know yet so studies are ongoing we have new data coming up every day just yesterday there were news reports that the phase 3 clinical trials of Bharat Biotech have been submitted and there is a meeting on 23rd of June about this about the results of 
phase three clinical trials. So the situation is evolving every day. I will try to keep up you guys with all the updates. So please stay tuned. So this was my discussion of Covaxin and its effectiveness against different COVID-19 variants. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.